Welcome to the Success Unleashed podcast. Now, we started this show for a very specific reason. Seven years ago, seven years ago, almost to the day, I retired as a police officer. Now, I retired for a very specific reason. That particular lifestyle wasn't serving me anymore. I had to choose between my family and my profession. And ultimately, my family ran out. And I'll share my story with you here in a minute. But what I want you to know is as a contractor, there's a reason that you should listen to this podcast. Number one, it's real. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. We're not going to stroke your little ego. We're going to give it to you the way it really is. Number two, my job is very simple. And that's to give you the tools and the frameworks that you need to create a business that supports the lifestyle that you want. Because the truth is you didn't start your contracting business to work 80 to 90 hours a week. You didn't start your contracting business so that you could get some gray hair. You didn't start your contracting business so you get fat and out of shape, have a wife who wanted to divorce you and kids who didn't want to know you anymore. You started a contracting business to support a lifestyle that you want, whether that's traveling with your family or experiencing life with your family or a bigger house for you and your family or doing something for your parents. Whatever the reason was, there was a lifestyle that you wanted to live and you saw your contracting business as being the way to make that happen. Now, you could be a painter, a plumber, an electrician, uh, a framer, a concrete guy, landscaper. You could be a builder, remodeler. Regardless, y'all fall in this same bucket of contractors. And that's why we created the Success Unleashed Beyond the Job Site podcast. Yeah, we're gonna give you some tips and some tricks and some tools and some frameworks you can use to skyrocket your business. Why? Because that's what we do every single day. But more than anything, what I want to give you is the tools that you need inside of here. The tools that you need inside of here to help balance what really matters in life. To help you make the decisions that you need to make to truly create the lifestyle that you want. Now, how did I get here and who am I? Well, my name is Garrett Bake. Originally born and raised in the great state of Arizona. When I graduated from high school, wife and I got married. We moved to the Phoenix area met my wife in high school. We got married in the year 2000. Now, when I got married, much like you, I didn't have the playbook. The playbook on what it means to be a husband, what it means to be a father. In fact, we didn't have very long to, to work on our relationship before, you guessed it, she was pregnant. Pregnant with son number one, who, by the way, just got married last weekend. Life comes at you fast. So here I am as a man trying to be a man without understanding what it means to be a man. And I knew that I needed to find a way to support my family. Well, 9-11 happened and I decided that I wanted to become a police officer. And I became a police officer in, in the city of Mesa, Arizona. I worked there for 15 years. Now, during that time, I met some amazing people. During that time, I had some great experiences. But more than anything, during that time, I almost died. I almost died, not because of the profession I was in, but because of the situations that I kept putting myself in. You see, I wanted to succeed so bad. I wanted to prove to everyone else that I was good enough, that I lost sight and lost focus of what really mattered. Slowly but surely, I started putting work before family. Slowly but surely, I started to seek support and comfort and accolades and attaboys from people other than my family. Slowly but surely, I started to miss birthday parties, holidays, family get-togethers. Why? Because I was getting more of a high, more of a kick, more of what I felt that I needed from work. And I had a, an amazing time, don't get me wrong. You see, I got to work assignments like the gang unit. I got to work on the SWAT team. I, I spent the majority of my career working undercover. In fact, right before I retired, I was a supervisor over our organized crime squad. What do we do? Intercept drug loads coming across the border from Mexico. Yeah, you heard that right. But during that time, I was so focused on one thing, and that was proving other people wrong, that I was losing myself in the process. You see, I thought that what it meant to be a man was that I provided for my family, right? And by providing for my family, that meant I had to work. Well, to provide more for my family, I had to work more right? And so I would work swing shift. I would work 16 to 18 hour shifts. I would work five to seven days a week to make money, right? Thinking that money would solve my problems. Money would solve my lack of intimacy. Money would solve 
the, the real reason that my kids didn't want to spend time with me because I was an asshole dad. But I was wrong. You see, because I would show up with this money after working a long, hard week at work and my wife would be passed out on the couch with a kid in diapers on top of her, dirty clothes everywhere, dirty dishes piled up. And I'd walk in expecting her to support me, expecting her to have a warm meal for me, expecting her to do the laundry, expecting her to take care of the kids. And the truth was, that wasn't happening. But from my perspective, she wasn't supporting me. Now, forget the fact that I wouldn't ask her what was going on. And if I just would have asked her, I would have found out that the child was sick, was at a temperature of 103, and she'd been up all night taking care of him. No, no, because at that point, it was all about me. And so I'd get pissed off and I'd get frustrated. It would lead to fights. And it would lead to me staying at friends' houses, sleeping on their couches. It would lead to us falling further and further apart. See, because I was only focused on one thing, and that was what I wanted. But at the sacrifice of everyone else. And so I felt like I deserved intimacy, sex for my wife on a regular basis. I felt like I deserved love for my kids. I felt like I deserved support from God. And none of that was coming. None of that was happening. And so I doubled down, working harder, working longer, getting the attaboys and the accolades, officer of the year, joining task forces, getting recognized, all these things happening at work. Meanwhile, my personal life is falling apart, crumbling to the ground. And in that time, I had issues. Still have lots of issues. But in that time, I had a big issue, and that was anxiety. I didn't I didn't know how to deal with the anxiety that I was feeling, the frustration, the anger, everything swirling inside. And during that time, I became addicted. I became addicted to prescription drugs, thinking that that would solve my problem because that's what doctors do, right? They give you pills and the pills are supposed to help you make you feel better. If they don't help you feel better, what do you end up doing? You end up taking more, more thinking that by taking more, they'll make you feel better, right? That doesn't happen. When the pills weren't enough, what's the next thing I looked at? Alcohol. I didn't grow up drinking, it wasn't part of my thing, never interested in it. But tell you what, when you start to lose your mind and things start to go sideways and nothing's happening in your life, you just want to escape. And when the prescription drugs weren't enough, alcohol it was. Go to choir practice with the boys, end the shift, hit the bar, drink it up, celebrate, pretend life is all right. At the back of my mind, I knew I had to go home. I had to go home and deal with the reality of my situation that I didn't want to do. And so this kept happening. More fights, more issues, more problems. I'm not getting the love I deserve at home, and so what do I do? I can find the love somewhere else. Find a woman. Find a woman who shows me that she loves me, cares for me, wants what's best for me agrees with all my grievances and all the issues that I say that I have in my life with everyone else, including my wife. And here I am in the arms of another woman, sleeping with another woman, thinking that that's going to solve my problems. Because the pills weren't enough, the alcohol was enough. Now I've got this woman. And guess what? It's not enough. See, because everything that I was looking for was on the outside, right? A solution from the outside instead of what was coming from the inside. Because I was scared. I didn't want to look at what was going on. And so I figured, well, if I can't make my wife and my kids happy, well, then I don't deserve to be with them. So one night I told them, I'm done. This relationship is over. And I remember packing up a suitcase, walking out the door, kids clinging, clinging to my arms, screaming and yelling and crying, don't go, Daddy, don't go. And I was numb. I was numb to the fact that they loved me. I was numb to the fact that I was the problem. I was numb to the fact that I was throwing away everything I'd ever worked for. And so I spent a few months living on friends' couches, bumming it here, bumming it there. When it wasn't convenient, I'd just sleep in my car at work, shower at work, work out at work, 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 work. And I got to this point where I was completely worn out. And one night sitting in my patrol car, I just wrapped up a shift going to start working four hours later, so it made no sense to go anywhere. 
reclined the seat, air conditioning humming, staring at the ceiling, asking myself if it was even worth it anymore. For the first time in my life, I turned to the passenger seat where my gun belt was. And I looked at the very weapon that I'd been given to protect and serve others. The very weapon that I'd been charged with helping others. And I looked at it and I said, maybe this is my way out. And as I'm reaching for this gun, there's a voice that comes inside of me, inside of my head. And this voice says very clearly to me, what do you want? And there was no hesitation. There's no thinking. There's no second guessing. I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted a passionate and intimate relationship with my wife. I wanted children who loved me and wanted to be with me. I wanted to have a relationship with God who I'd walked away from. I wanted to have purpose and meaning in my life. And then the voice followed up and said, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? See, because I knew everything that I needed to do. I just hadn't done it. I'd spent every day of my life up until that point blaming everyone, everyone else for my problems, everyone else for my shortcomings, everyone else for the bad grades, everyone else for the reasons that I didn't get the scholarships that I wanted, everyone else for the reasons that I didn't end up in a career that I thought that I was going to be in, everyone else for the promotions that passed me over, everyone else for the lack of money that I made, everyone else, everyone else, everyone else. And the truth was it was all my fault. So I went back with my wife and I basically threw up on top of her. I told her, hey, look, here's all the things that I've done. And she had a choice at that moment. Actually, she still has a choice. And that was to take me back or throw me out. Because the truth is I deserved it. I deserved to be alone. I deserved to pay her and the kids for the rest of my life. I deserved everything that was coming to me. But thank God that she's a woman with the biggest heart that I've ever known. Thank God that she saw me for who I truly was. Thank God that she could see past my mistakes and past my shortcomings. Now I'm not gonna tell you fairy tale ending. We rode off into the sunset holding hands and that was that. That started my journey, my journey of personal development, which ultimately got me to where I'm at today, here with you. See, because I had to figure out what life meant. I had to figure out the purpose of how is it that I try and balance my personal and professional life, which by the way, doesn't exist. We'll talk about that later. I had to figure out though, how do I make it all work? And the first thing that I had to do was figure out how to work on me. That was the first thing. And it took years of work, years. And I'm still working on myself. So you may wonder, why is this podcast called Success Unleashed? Well, because success has little to do with the type of contractor you are and more to do with the type of person you are. Contracting just happens to be your business. It happens to be a skill set that you have. So do I want to help you win in life? Yep. Do I want to help you win in business? Yep. But more than anything, I want you to be at peace. I want you to be satisfied. I want you to be aligned with your purpose. That's what I want more than anything. So after years of personal development, I got to a point. I got to a point where I realized that the very job that I loved and worked so hard for was actually pulling me away from what I wanted. So I retired, hung it up as they say. And I got into the world of consulting. Now you're probably wondering, well, was he teaching men how to be better men? Better men? Well, a little bit, right? but I still didn't know what I was doing. And so as I was working on myself, I had a couple of buddies who were contractors who reached out to me and they were like, hey, you did some really cool stuff, some really major, high stress, high risk. Could you help us with our businesses? And I said, hey, listen, I had a couple of businesses when I was a police officer. I had a window washing business, I had a landscaping business. I'd remodeled a couple of homes that we've lived in. So I had familiarity with the industry but I wouldn't consider myself an expert. They're like, no, no, no. We don't want you for that. We want you for what's inside of here, inside your mind. I said, all right, cool. 
And so we looked at their business and I said, how about you do this instead of that? How about you stop doing that and start doing that? How about you tweak this and change that? Wouldn't you know their businesses went from six to seven figures and then one of them from seven to eight figures. I said, you know what? I really like this. And the rest, as they say, is history. I got into consulting and the American Contractor Network was born. Now you're probably wondering, well, what do you do? In a nutshell, this is what we do. We help contractors work less and make more. We help you put the people, the processes and systems in place in your personal and professional life that get you the results that you want. That's it. Do we talk about money? Yeah, sure. Marketing? Yep. Sales? Check. Running jobs? Uh-huh. Everything in between. But I'm also going to teach you what it means to be a real man, to be a father, to put your family first, to put God in your life. Because all those things are important to me and all those things I lost and had to regain. So the whole purpose of this podcast is to help you out. Now, people always ask, well, what are you selling? Is it a product? Is it a service? I'm selling an opportunity, an opportunity for you to become who you want to become. If you choose to want to do stuff with us, cool, awesome. Door's always open. If you don't, it's all good with me. As long as you get something out of this that helps you become who you want to be. That's what I care about. So you can follow us on social media. You can follow us on YouTube. We're out and all over the place. You can come to some of our events. Love to have you. But more than anything, if you leave with something, one thing that helps make your life better, mission accomplished. Now, what do I want you to do now? I want you to think about your story. I want you to think about where you're at right now. I want you to think about where it is that you want to go. But ultimately, what do you need to do to get there? I may be the answer for you, but I may not. Either way, there's somewhere you want to go and there's something you got to do. My job is to get you to do it. All right. Now I'll know what time it is. It's time to get after it. Three, two, one. Off you go. Off you go.